Okay, as good as Themify is, there's still the need sometimes to get into more of the advanced stylizing of your website. And I'm going to show you how to do more advanced stuff in this one. So um, you, you may be able to tweak the site in a certain way with the settings, but let's get in a little bit more advanced into how you can tweak them a little bit more. Suppose they're not doing quite exactly what you want them to do. Now, the normal way that most themes would have you do that is you would go into appearance here and you'd go into the editor. Now, when I do this, it loads all the theme files. And I can actually go into the header and I can change things in here. Now, you can see that there's some HTML and some PHP, and maybe you can't see that. Um, and, you know, if you, don't, if you don't know much about developing, then you might not be able to recognize the tags. But I'm going to try to help you a little bit here. So um, how you'd normally change styling is you'd go all the way down here to the, C the CSS file, the style uh, CSS file, and you would add in the styling here. Uh, and don't worry if this looks really weird to you. I'm going to show you a little bit of how to do this. But uh, this is the wrong place to do it. Because as you can see right now, I have an upgrade available. And if I did an upgrade right now, it would overwrite all these files, meaning that if I change the style sheet, it would then overwrite it. And uh, I could do a backup of the style sheet and then um, then do the upgrade, but then um, and then just put the backup back on there. But then what if they've made some major modifications to the style sheet and stuff like that? So this is not really the proper way to do it. The proper way to do it is to overwrite this with a different file that we're going to create. And uh, Ultra gives you or Themify gives you that option. So basically, we go into Ultra here and we go into Customize. And first of all, I wanted to show you this advanced tab right here, which you might not have noticed. So we have uh, the standard uh, options here. And say we wanted to move the logo down a little bit. We've got the site logo option here. And you can see um, there's not really a method to move the logo down from here. But if I go into advanced options, and you'll see that uh, it gives me a little bit more options here, uh, really just this one. Um, which is the site logo position. So this basically um, determines the position that the logo is in. Um, relative is, is basically what it is right now, and that means that uh, relative to where it's been placed in the, in the code is where it's going to show up. So if it was placed at the bottom of the code, then it's going to be at the bottom of the page. If it was at the top, it would be at the top. Um, fixed means it's fixed on the page, yada, yada, absolute. Anyway, so we won't get into too much into those. But uh, let's look at uh, just moving it down using the relative um, setting. So we're just going to go into relative, and uh, I've already fiddled with this a little bit. And you can see that as soon as I did that, uh, I chose uh, top to be 100. And you can see it, it bumped it down. Maybe we just wanted to bump it down 10, and that doesn't look too bad. Of course, it was, it was positioned pretty good to begin with, but maybe we wanted to bump it down 10. Um, the problem with this is, um, is maybe you want to... Uh, bump everything down and not have it go off the header here. So let's uh, look at exploring that just a little bit differently. So I'm just going to change these back. I'm going to go ahead and save just to make sure everything's saved. And I'm going to go down here to the custom CSS setting. So this is where we can get into the real advanced stuff. Now don't worry, we're not going to get too over your head, hopefully. So first of all, I want to understand the structure of the page. So the structure of the page is that uh, everything is broken up into individual boxes, and those boxes are have a tag called the div, D-I-V. And I'm going to show you that here in just a second. And then, of course, we have images, and we have links, and stuff like that. And those are all broken into individual tags as well. Every tag has an opening and a closing tag. So a, a D-I-V tag would open, and then it would also close with a D-I-V tag. And anything in, in between those tags is basically controlled by that that div tag. So if I have an image in that div tag and I want to, I want just to move the whole div down, then it's going to move everything, including the image that's in there. Now, um, by by changing uh, the position, which we did a minute ago, that actually is bumping it down, and that's saying, well, the position isn't really relative. It's it's relative to the box, but it still bumps it out of the box uh, because we've said go ahead and and be a hundred down and it's not worrying about how high the box is. So that's a little confusing, I know, but uh, let's get into a little bit more of the, the meat of what we want to do here. So say we want to just bump this down and we want it to 
we want to just add some margin here. So we want to add actual margin, which is just going to push open that box a little bit wider. Uh, and we want to push it just on the top of the logo here. So what we need to do is we need to find out the name of the div, uh, which is actually the ID, or it can also be the class name. And so I'm going to do that by, I'm in Chrome right now. And Chrome has a neat feature. Now this is separate from Themify. Chrome just has a neat feature where I can right click on it and I can say inspect the element. And because I was clicking on this, it's going to show me that element there. And sometimes there's just so many divs going on that it's hard to determine exactly which one is doing what. Um, but uh, it, it takes a little bit of fiddling with to really determine it. But uh, if you're lucky, you can kind of figure it out. Now you can see that it kind of cascades here and shows you um, what's inside of what. So we have the logo here, and then we have the link. The link basically just takes you back to the home page. And then we actually have the div, which is called site logo. So let's move the actual div. And so we're going to go, we're just going to, I'm going to double click on that. And that's going to grab the ID. So th like I said before, there's two things that we can use to name the div or we can use to control the div. Um, one is the ID, and the other one is a class name. And you can see up above we've got a class in the in the div that's containing or that that is the parent div to the site logo div. So we've got a, a class name here. There's no ID name, so I could actually control this div with the class uh, with this class header bar. Now the reason you would use a class instead of an ID is there can only be one. Uh, I, one div on that page or one, any, one object on that page with this ID. So there's only one ID per page. Um, a class, you could have multiple classes with the same name on that page. Of course, you're going to control all those classes the same. So say you had uh, four columns and you wanted to control each column and you wanted each one to have a border or whatever, then you would just uh, you'd give them all the same class and you would uh, change all those borders. But maybe you wanted one to have a red border where all the other ones had black ones, well then you could give that one an ID as well, and it could take on all the other things that the class that the other classes had, and you could still give it a class, and then you could also give it an ID and say, well this one, this ID is going to be the red border. So um, it might get a little confusing there, but just remember that one ID per page and multiple classes per page, but you can control them separately, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So because this is an ID, we're going to tell the CSS file that this is an ID. We're going to do that. I'm going to just do a copy here. And we're going to come up here, and I'm going to do tell it it's an ID by putting a pound symbol there. Now, if it was a class, I would put a, a dot. I would, for example, for this one right here, um, I'm going to copy that, and I, would, I could do a dot. And that would tell it that it's a class. So now let's uh, let's go in here, and we're going to expand that a little bit. We're going to open up the area here first by, by putting some brackets in there. So we're basically we're saying here is now where the uh, styling begins. So we've got uh, these brackets here and we want to change the top margin or margin top. And you can go look on Google for all the different um, CSS uh, tags that you can put in there, but uh, this is the one for that. So I'm going to give it 10 pixels. Now here's a problem. Um, when I change that, it should have bumped it down because this is this does show a live update most of the time. Uh, sometimes it doesn't work always the way it should, but it didn't move it at all. And that's because something else is already basically setting the top margin. So I, I want to make sure it knows that this one is the important one. And you see, as I did that, it bumped it down. I'm going to make that a little bit more stronger. You can see it now. So basically, um, the exclamation point important tells um, the CSS, even though you have this somewhere else and this somewhere else, this one is the important one. Now, you can have multiple important ones. It's going to go for the last one that was put in. So maybe the other one does say important on it. But as soon as I put this one on it, this one would be the last one put in, and it's going to open. So that is how you basically set up a top margin. You could even do um, a border. And border gets a little bit trickier. Uh, you basically need to say how big it's going to be. 
what type of border it, it is, and then the color. And you can see that, that that all changed. Now, what if we want padding? Padding is different than margin. Um, padding is inside the box. Margin is outside the box. So padding, let's do padding top. We'll do 10px. And it doesn't like that either, so we're going to make it important. And there it is. So um, that's just some, some simple little things that you can do. Now, getting more into the code here, and um, we can... You can see as I as I hover over these uh, these objects, it will highlight it up here and show me which ones are being are being uh, um, are the ones that are associated with this tag right here. And one of the things that's really cool about this, uh, now, like I said, this is just in Chrome, but I know Firefox also has a setting or has uh, this feature as well. It's a little bit different. Uh, I prefer the Chrome one. But um, this is separate from Themify. This has nothing to do with Themify, but this is just a, a, a nice little tool, and I believe it just comes standard with Chrome, uh, where you where developers can go in and they can fiddle with their page. Now, say I wanted to make these changes, but I didn't want to. I wanted to test the changes. I didn't want to really make the changes. So let's go ahead and we'll test uh, different things out. So um, as you can see here, I'm I'm on site logo right now. And it's showing me all the stylizing that is affecting this uh, uh, this div right here. And so you can see, because I've shrunk my screen down to fit into a smaller video, I'm within a thousand pixels wide. And so now we've got some things that are affecting it. Um, you can see that it's the float is none. That means it's not floating left. It's not floating right. It's just it's basically just static. Um, and let's do. Uh, and you can see right here is is this. This right here. So that's appearing right here. Now say we, we don't want to do it, um, we don't want to have to load it, you know, test it, save it, check it, and see if it works. We want to actually just fiddle with it and uh, see what happens. So we can do that over here without actually affecting the real site. So this is just not affecting anybody else who's on the site. This is just, just for you. So I can come over here and I can I can click on any one of these and I can even disable. Just click this, and that disables it. So I can just go through, change all that, or I can enable it, and I can say, well, what if I? So I want to make sure it highlights the box so that, that there's actually a box there, and then you kind of have to double click in there, and then you can just boom and make that change. Now, like I said, this isn't a permanent change. This is just for me to see um, how it looks, and so that kind of gives you an idea of some of the things you can do now. Another cool thing about this down here and down the bottom, it does have, uh, it does show you that for the element that you're on, what the margin is, what the border is, what the padding is, and what the size of it is. So if you're dealing with the width of, say, uh, right here, this, um, this, this tag line here, we want to see um, why it's being shrunk down. Maybe our tag line's a little wider and it's not fitting in here. Um, or, or let's even just go in here and we're, we're going to change the width change the, uh, the font size. So let's, um, so I just, I just right click on that, inspect that element, and we're going to choose this class right here. And let's put it into a good spot. So I'm just kind of looking through the code. Here's where the font size is set. I really don't like using the EM. I like using the pixels, so I'm going to go 18px, and you can see it changed it. Let's go a little bit more noticeable. Okay. Um, now, right now, it seems that this box that we're in um, is is just expanding. Uh, the width is just auto, so it's expanding uh, however we want it to. But if we wanted to fit or set that so that it's uh, it's just a default width, and we could do that as well. We could just go in header bar. We can say uh, down here, so header bar is a class. So I'm going to go period, header bar, width is 600px. And you can see it just expanded there over here because I did that. And, um, and 
and I didn't need to put the import in there. It just did it. And so now, as I hover over it, you can see it's 600 pixels. So um, it kind of takes some fiddling to determine um, what div is affecting your objects that you're trying to change and how to adjust those. Um, but I just kind of wanted to give you a little bit more advanced instructions so you can come in here and you can um, tweak things and, you know, just tweak things a little bit here and there and, um, you know, try things out. If you just want to make a little tweak, go for it. If, if, you're, if you, you understand things a little bit better, then by all means, do whatever you want to do. Um, but I just wanted to, you know, encourage you to go ahead and, and feel free to tweak them and just see if you can, you know, can make it do what you want it to do. If not, then you just, you know, you just erase it. It's not that big a deal. So um, if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to comment on this video or uh, go to topedgeservices.com. And um, we also offer hosting and web development to where you can pay us. Um, but you can also ask us simple questions. We'll be happy.